So, <laughs> back to it. So talking more about the sixes, they, um, as well as um, being the number of higher responsibility in family, it's also well-being. I'm reading across the do document now. <laughs> and uh, so it's great. I can have the two side by side. So, progress. Um, right, so, yeah, well-being, family. Um, that totally fits with Anna because um, threes are all about well-being as well. And harmony. Harmony, that's the word. They all, Jonathan wants harmony in the relationships, like calm throughout the house, and so do threes as well. So that's a really good, you know, overlap, um, compatibility there. And threes are often born into families, um, sorry, not threes, sixes, but it is the same with the three as well, where um, there's conflict and disharmony between the mother and father. So they're born into that you know, the opposite of, of what he is kind of thing, or he's going to express in this lifetime. I look really weird in this small, this small frame of camera, freaking me out a bit. So um, the six has to go through the act of establishing their own personal harmony before they can, you know, but, you know, achieve the, what they desire, which is um, healthy, lifelong relationships. That gives it as a huge source of um, potential fulfillment for them. And also they're at their best when they're serving, when what they do directly serves the lives of others, which totally fits with him, it really does. However, the huge Achilles heel for a six is the fact that they're idealists. I, keep, <laughs> I don't like the way I look now, so I'm trying to sort it all out, smooth out all the wrinkles and stuff. Yeah. Um, excuse me, I think I've got to sneeze. Oh. All right, I didn't sneeze on the screen, don't worry. <laughs> oh, here we go. Right, they're idealists, so they kind of... And they've got this higher higher knowledge kind of thing, whereby other people disappoint them because they don't match up to these high ideals, you see. And so throughout their lifetime, they've got to learn to let go of that and... and enjoy their high ideals this beautiful vision that they have of perfection i suppose and, you know and living in a higher way you know the harmony that can potentially be created between individuals in families and stuff i mean it's a beautiful thing it's a wonderful joy joyous <laughs> thing but they see because they've got that vision, which is awesome. I mean, they, it can produce brilliant art and stuff like that. You know, if they use it for their benefit, you know, and enjoy it and express it. But often, you know, they all go around. There's no criticism. Oh, God, there's somebody at the door now. I'm on a roll, so I'm, I'm not going to answer it. So, um, but it, because we're struggling with our life path to get to where we want to go, to the ideal, you know, expression of the six, we do the opposite. We're, other people can't see what we can see, and we criticise them. and And it can make you know sixes quite harsh and um, have strong opinions about how things should be, kind of thing. So you have to watch that. <laughs> Just enjoy all your traits. You know, don't try and force them on other people. So that's what they need to get to. Allow other people to be themselves, and and in, and love the fact that they are the way they are. You know, simple as that. They're creative people, particularly with the voice, and make friends for life. So, yeah, that sounds like Jonathan. So, yeah, looking at the two, the four, and the six all together, you know, that these individuals with 24 six can be constantly searching for the perfect job, the perfect relationship, the perfect life. Oh, my phone's going off now. And whatever situation they're in, they tend to feel like there's something better, you know, we could do this better, you know. So, they seem impatient and we're striving for more kind of thing not happy with the way things are what currently exists they strive to have their own impeccable behavior and feel enormous regret and guilt if they do slip up i mean it's him to a t what he expressed in that video the other day they try too hard and feel too responsible so true <laughs> So it's worded in this book that i'm reading so well um instead of trying to do right by others they need to do right by themselves. You know, that's what they need to learn to do. Connecting with their own authentic values and needs and be a bit more flexible. Yeah. 
Wow, I just did a quick um, calculation of um, <clears throat> the numbers based on Jonathan's name, and it comes out that he's got a six soul number as well. So like mine's a three, you know, I like nothing more than to play and have fun and express joy kind of thing. He, 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 yeah, he, this responsibility, family, nurturing thing is his, his inner desire as well. So that's really good that they're compatible like that, his soul number and his life path number. Because people can have conflicting numbers, you know. That's really good. And um, his expression number, yeah, is two, female nurturing. Yeah, he's really good at that. He spends ages with the kids talking to them and stuff and drawing them out of themselves. Yeah. So that's his talent, his expression number, that's how I see it. And um, his, uh, what do I call it, public number, how other people see him is five. And that's the five energy where you want to experience all different things and you're at the centre and everything revolves <laughs> around you kind of thing. It is like that in his family, like, yeah, he's controlling things because he's doing all the vlogs or, you know, anyway, it looks like that to me. And Anna and the kids are kind of moving around him in a way. So, but that's how it, he, it looks, whether that's true or not. It's like I'm a seven public number, so they're very studious. And um, they can look really neurotic, like people don't want to, when they first meet me, I might appear like neuro too neurotic to want to make friends with kind of thing. It's like, that's a real bummer. <laughs> Because I'm just really friendly and, you know, I've got the three, childlike, and want to make friends with everyone, you know. I'm a Leo as well. I'm very loyal and friendly and stuff, touchy-feely. <laughs> and people are look, looking at me and go, whoa. And I probably come across like that totally in the vlogs as well and the, the videos. So, you know, we've all got these challenges and karma numbers as well. Like, I get, I've got karma like being blamed for things that aren't my fault. Oh, my God. Boy, has that played out. And, uh, but once you know it, you see, you can kind of relax into it a bit more, you know, not worry about it so much, you kind of flow with it, you know, because in some ways I love being on my own, not having so many friends, you know, because I want to do all this stuff, like get all this information out there, and it's kind of perfect, really, all the numbers are kind of perfect. It just sounds really bad, like criticism and stuff, you know, if you're sensitive and intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> not that I am or anything, and not that Jonathan is, I mean, obviously he is, you know, yeah, people can take, well, most people are, you know, some kind of sensitivity and stuff, because we're born into the opposite, we've got all this conditioning that we should be like this and we should be like that, we're all sensitive, aren't we, and take things as criticisms, instead of embracing it and say, ha, ah, how does this fit into what I want to achieve in my life, kind of thing, you know, and see it as fun and, or just a challenge, you know, not so serious and heavy, kind of thing, yeah. That's what I believe inside. I would just wish I could act that out in my daily life. <laughs> don't you? Don't you want to be this perfect version of yourself? Yeah, I've got a bit of six going on. I do actually have a six in my numbers, yeah. So I've got a bit of that too, this ideal self. Yeah, seeing things, oh, there's a better way to do this. If only I could do that, kind of thing. Okay, some more um, information I gathered while I was doing research to do this video um, is to kind of back up the numerology that I'm not talking crap, you know, cause a lot, so many people don't believe in this stuff because it's like, you know, as a human being, if you've not studied science or the spiritual side, it's like how the F can all this be right, like all the numbers based on your name and the date that you were born, how can that possibly be? But if you think that time doesn't even exist... We can't even wrap our heads around that. Like everything's existing at the same time, you know. You can't. So it's like you have to accept. Like when you're a scientist and you understand spirit, spiritual stuff as well, realms and stuff, you can see how. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> Hold on. You can see how we don't know, and we don't have to know. We can't know because we're just at this, you know, brain and what we can receive and perceive with these senses. So that's why we can't perceive it all, but we wouldn't want to either, kind of thing. Not to, because um, God is experiencing itself through us, you know, whatever the energy, you know, we've called God, given it this image to get our head around, kind of thing. It needs to experience itself. So it had to slow everything down to lower vibration and create the opposite and stuff. So we can't, you know, we can't see it all. And if we did understand it all, there would almost be no point in being here. You couldn't experience the opposite. You'd, you'd know that you were powerful. So we're born into 
um, unpower or dispower, I was going to say, <laughs> dispower, I like that one, dispower unpowerful situations and um, so that we can, you know, work our way towards realising we're actually powerful, very, very powerful indeed. On to the article I found, um, it, it was in, oh, I can't see, oh, the Irish, oh no, oh, the Independent, the Irish Independent, I think, yeah, independent.ie, anyway. Um, it might have been the independent newspaper in the UK, this is. So, which, um, this is the Coney Jollies, uh, are based in the UK. It says, I'm very competitive, I'm very dri driven. He was interviewed, you know, they went to see him and stuff. Um, this job, the more work I put into it, the more rewards I get. Yeah, so competitive and driven. Um, you know, the 60s, they try and live up to this high ideal all the time. Um, and work, you know, the number four energy, the workers of the world. He grew up as one of four children in the 1980s. The financial pressures were intense and his parents' dramatic rows were near constant, which is a disar disharmony he was born into, to create the opposite of the him working towards, you know, walking towards the ideal six situation, the harmony in the family situation. He says, 80s Dublin was tough. I don't blame my parents for the shit that we went through because no one had money, he says. That's nice, he doesn't blame them. But obviously it had an effect on him. I'm just being myself now, I'm scratching this, so I hope you don't mind. Um, so that I relax more. Give up trying to be something, just be myself. So, um, yeah, so he had emotional difficulties, you know, huge depression, became clinically depressed, and anxiety has remained a feature of his life to this day. Yeah, you can see that. And naturally, ha these have been an, a su the subject of an episode of the show, which, you know, I haven't seen. But... Oh, no. oh, he said he had a horrible time at school um, because it, he went to, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm avoiding saying it, Terenu College, and he didn't want to play rugby. <coughs> Excuse me. He was more interested in feminine things and creativity. I wanted to express myself, he said, in more creative ways, and that resulted in me getting horribly beaten up and bullied. Oh my god, yeah, fits with his life. And uh, I love this part. He doesn't deny, and it's really important to get this information out there to people. He doesn't deny that, you know, just doing those vlogs, the p parts that we see is an incomplete view. For one thing, he and Anna, like any normal couple, are not always perfectly at peace with each other. They fight. Of course they will, because they're not perfectly compatible, you know. Nobody is, really. If you watch an episode and it's nice and bright and then it cuts to 7pm that evening, that's because we've been killing each other all day. I'm glad you split it like that as well. It's honest, it's real, it's the truth. You know, so other people don't try and match up to this perfectness that they see. It's brilliant. Um, oh, but never to the point, we're never killing each other to the point where we thought our relationship was in jeopardy. So that's good. Another interesting thing, I was scrolling down with the information I've got, is the fact that um, Johnson's an Aquarius and um, Anna's a Scorpio. And Aquarians, uh, you know, I've lived with an Aquarian and I had Aquarian boyfriend before that. There is a, even though we're opposite signs, Leo and Aquarius, uh, there is some compatibility there. Yeah, I love the depth of the Aquarian, I absolutely adore it. And they don't like being tied down. And, um, which, you know, you think is the exact opposite of um, wanting to stay in a family and nurture and make, you know, a lifelong commitment to somebody. But he, within that relationship, he doesn't want to be tied down, yeah. He wants to be able to freedom to do what he wants to do, you know, in the house <laughs> with his refurbishments, with the children, you know, the fun, the events they go on and stuff like that, possibly. That could be how, you know, that works there. So Scorpio and Aquarius, I'll have to look that up and see how they get on. I've got a lot of work to do because we've got Emilia Tomasina. Tomasina, oh, what a beautiful name. Emilia Tomasina, Sacconi Joli, Eduardo, Alessia, and Andrea Luca, and Alessia Francesca. So I've got all those numbers to work out. <laughs> I can't wait to get going and get my calculator. <laughs> work out all the numbers and see how they're going to interact with each other, potentially, you know, from what I can see from the numbers and stuff and the names. And uh, more about, I want to do more about compatibility, obviously, between, I'll do Anna's um, numerology and a bit more about compatibility between the two of them and then the kids and see, you know, if there are any obvious like clashes or 
why you know which kids are going to get on possibly you know with the numbers and stuff like that yeah see if we can pick out any more things all in the spirit of you know you believing that numerology is a thing that it works and um you know, don't worry about how it could possibly work it just does <laughs> and pythagoras was studying it you know he's a top bloody mathematician you know he had a secret school like not everyone could, he wouldn't let everyone in you know because it is I don't know if he didn't want people to poo-poo it sort of thing, who, who uh, there's no way they could, you know, possibly believe it sort of thing. But he'd only let certain people with higher knowledge in to learn this stuff. You know, he's a mathematician, a scientist. Um, and uh, and very much the spirit of, you know, loving each other, understanding each other, not fighting yourself. Start with yourself. Don't fight yourself. Love yourself as much as possible. You know, understand yourself. And so you'll be easy, ease up on the other people around you as well. Stop trying to change them, get them to be like you want them to be, you know. We're all on that bloody trying to, if only that person was like that, you know, being a one, it's like we, I seem to have to do everything for myself. And it's like, I've never had the help that I feel I want. Because going from zero confidence, oh my God, I just want to be helped, you know, every step of the way. And I never get that help. But, of course, that gives me the real inner strength, the real independence, which is what I'm here to experience. So, But we always get try and get other people to change, to fit, you know, with what we want. We've got to do it for ourselves, people. Ourselves, people, you can do it too. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, love. Think about love all the time. Okay. I'll end it here. I'm glad I paused it. I didn't end it because I just realised I wanted to say. This idea about me being myself rather than trying to look good and stuff, I mean, I do a certain amount, you know. But um, <laughs> um, I'll be more relaxed. I can produce more content. I'm not worrying about the lighting being right and that I'm not feeling great because my energy is going right up and down, you know, because I've eaten something. And I was always making them in first thing in the morning. And if I didn't have the ideas and everything ready or the research done or, you know, the time to do it in the morning, that would be it for the whole day sort of thing. But, like, you can see I'm going red because food really affects me so much. And um, it's just part of my challenge is the energy issues and uh, I can produce more content I can have more fun I'd be more relaxed have more fun it takes the pressure off I can enjoy it more so and it's just a, a general thing for life you know if you're being yourself nobody can kind of attack you because you can point things out yeah I don't look great so what so what you know? <sighs> yeah because yeah, my mind just off again it's like I start to say something I don't complete it before my mind goes on to something else. And so I feel like I'm left feeling like I want to keep explaining. I want to keep explaining. Yeah, it's like a little thing. Like a sh 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 before I finish the thing I was talking about. That being yourself and it creates more time when you're yourself. You don't have to keep trying to be perfect and stuff. More time, more fun, more relaxation. That's the other point. Yeah, relaxation. Yeah, which is essential, really, to allow the universe to do its thing, to heal you. Because if we're all tense and trying to be something all the time, you're blocking energy, natural energy flow and abundance and everything, really. But when you're yourself, you're relaxed in your body, you can allow yourself to be healed. You can allow love to come. It's just I suddenly looked at myself on the screen and thought, yeah, I'm red in the face and stuff. But people can see me as I really am. And I'm this like little bouncy tigger inside sort of thing. And they can see that and love that maybe. That's how I felt suddenly. Yeah. I get these flashes of, you know, vision and insight and stuff. So <laughs> it's so much more fun being yourself. Oh my god. Yeah. It's like I feel like a pirate now, like one eye is bigger than the other and stuff. And I can just like get into the whole pirate thing. Yeah, okay. We can't all really be perfect now. Because we never actually get there, do we? We go, you know, just get better and better. And we always want more because the whole universe is expanding. So we always want more. So you never actually get there. So it's enjoy the process. That's it. That's, I knew something was coming. Enjoy the process. Enjoy your daily life. See, that's a three. So to me, it's like enjoy the process. And that, it makes sense for the whole thing anyway. Just enjoy it, you know. All right. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Now, final, love yourself. Love you, everyone around you. <laughs> love your life. Bye.